The first thing to understand about Douglas is that he spent 20 years as a slave, both on the eastern shore of Maryland and in Baltimore. He suffered or experienced virtually all the physical and psychological traumas and scarring that slavery could wreck upon a human being. He also had the good fortune of being sent by his owner, Thomas Auld, to Baltimore, to a city, to an urban area where he not only found work in the docks, although dangerous work, but he was able to expand his literacy and expand his worldview and see the sailing ships and make friendships in the streets of Baltimore, not only with young white boys, but with older black preachers and eventually with the free black community of Baltimore. But Douglas left slavery with a rage in his heart, a scarring in his soul that he needed to vent and expend uh, throughout, frankly, most of the rest of his life. And he was very lucky, I would argue, that he was able to do this through language. He didn't have to do it through physical violence. Because he became such a master of words, he was able to expend that rage in his soul, in his speaking, and in his writing. Millions of Americans saw their country, their story, through the ancient biblical story. But Douglas made the most of it. And he delivered few speeches that didn't have direct lines or paraphrases from especially Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. So only through those kinds of biblical stories could Douglas tell the story of his own people. Douglas's entire family went to war. He recruited two of his sons, Lewis and Charles, into the famous 54th Massachusetts Regiment. His third son, Frederick Jr., uh, enlisted to be a recruiter of black troops in the lower Mississippi Valley. And his whole family, in effect, was at war by 1863, whatever the outcome might be. Uh, and for Douglas, this war was what he had dreamed of, and its results also were what he had dreamed of.